finishing game, I'm certain of it. As we get into the round now, the buys are coming through. We've got a couple of smokes on the T side. We are used to players going towards long. But in this setup, they haven't got a P250. Suggests it could be the mid split, which is a very powerful strategy at this point in Dust 2. Glaive to spot towards middle, takes a little bit of damage there, down to 88. And just to note, no diffuse kits available for Astralis. I'm assuming it's Rain that was cleaning his glasses. Yes, no one else on stage has them, so it has Cold to be. Cold sometimes. Sometimes, when he, yeah, when he feels like putting them on. Oh, and Olaf Meister, there you go. Ah, oh, fair enough. He looks far more sophisticated. Well, we'll see if he plays that way. Glaive's already taken a little bit of damage. Naturally, he will be the man holding the utility for Astralis. On the other side, two players. If Nico and Olaf use those smokes effectively. We could burn for a treat of an execution on a pistol round. Remember, it was yesterday, CT side, that Nico overextended. Pistols weren't exactly clean for FaZe. Well, the strategy they deployed on their T side of Dust2 was Nico went towards B by himself. Dribble smoke out, Molotov towards the back platform, they went long. It didn't look like it was going to work out. Tarek backstabbed them, they still won the round. Uh, so I'm expecting something a bit different. Brocky jumping into the spawn exactly, that actually yes. allowed that. He took 10 damage and still found two kills. Contact is going to be made at the mid doors. Glaive, the one to do so. Flashed off, though, when he crossed, and no one peeking. So Spotting, not a lot of information. Capri's gonna get it instead, and oh, get it, he will. Down to 10 HP. They want to pounce on that, but the problem is that Glaive prevents them, or does he, from doing so, because inside a CT spawn, he finds the first kill, but Device gets him back immediately after. Majisk. Holds off though, you gotta give him credit. Back inside of the window, 80 HP, he has to be perfect because Dupree's in closet and doesn't have anything to work with. There's no damage dealing utility, in fact, none at all left now as Olaf goes down. So he's oh. safe from everything but bullets and he may not even need to fire any. His teammates doing the work for him, Nico gone. Device gives Astralis round number one. Well, there we go, we didn't see the P250, so the mid split looked very likely there, but it was scrappy from Phase Gun, even after getting that first pick. There didn't seem to be much coordination, quite tentative in their approach at the mid doors. Normally, you see Nico, he's the first one through. He's the one finding those opening kills towards the CT spawn position. He's the last to go down. He was nowhere near the B-bomb site. It's a little bit disjointed there from FaZe. Not what we expect from them. Looking a little bit shaken after the first round. Astralis holds strong towards the B site with Majisk doing a lot of damage there with two frags. And just to note, no bomb goes down, so you are going to see the Kriegs and AKs come out in the third round here. So I have to take a full eco. You can't really afford to spend a single dollar here. So Glock's across the board. No armor. And the objective, if already get that towards short, try and get that bomb planted. You need one kill to do that. And that can happen even with blocks about Dupree doing everything he can here towards middle to deny any sort of access. Spectacular shot from an M4. Obviously not going up against head armor. Achievable. You get those headshots cleanly and quickly. Even with that weapon in. Point in case he finds another under rain. Damage done by Glaive before that. No push out toward Catwalk, so they are just going to hold together and make sure they don't lose any guns. The SMG can afford to be a little more aggressive. Glaive does exactly that to take down Nico, and that now gives the M4s more confidence to pick at range because any threat of a reload strike, in other words, someone pushing through when they had to reload, is gone. Although Brokey will get a little bit closer. He's the last alive bomb in his hand. Zipix not quite fast enough to catch him on the flank. Good luck, Brokey. Yeah, I don't think you're getting any plant. Majisk was certainly aware of that possibility. Just to note as well, the fact he's got the org towards that B bomb side makes a lot of sense. You want to play towards a platform. You want to be spamming through the smokes. You want a bit of precision, a bit of range up against those Kriegs. Five of those coming out in this first gun round here for FaZe Clan. This is where the game really gets interesting. If I'm Astralis right now, I'm trying to force the issue a little bit. I'm trying to push the envelope towards maybe the B tunnels, push towards short. They need an opening kill. They do not have the luxury of the AWP here. They had a very successful anti-eco run on Olaf Meister with the long spawn Krieg in hand. He'll be taking it. You'll see a lot of these as we'll get the flashbangs out. He's going to fully commit to this one. Out he goes, but he's completely blind. Will he be taken down? The damage is inflicted, but they can't do too much. I'm surprised he lives because they weren't blinded on the other side from what I could tell. Instead, it was just utility and scramble. They couldn't have time to get a shot toward him. Zipix gets inside of the pit, MP9 in hand. Device and Glaive will support it. There's two, however, at the dumpster. If they wanted, they could boost right now. Great utility usage here for Strata. Just segregating those two players, boosted to the blue bin. The SMG is doing a lot of work here. Glaive, he's jumping at the bit, getting involved in this one, but Olaf Meister will pull one back. And Zipix may only have an MP9. He was aware that they could boost, that two had gotten there, so he was watching for Glaive in case they wanted to go over the top. Unfortunately, Glaive went down by getting a little too aggressive on the peak, and I think Zipix might be in for a bit of trouble here. Dupree's gonna have to be perfect again with the M4. Unfortunately for him, Majestic's gone. He has to do it all. Oh, he might! Zipix 
with the assist from Dupree, is able to get it with the MP9. Bomb goes down at the long cave, and Cold's got to flank around. They've got to be aware of this, but Dupree's the one with the rifle, and he gets inside of the pit. He's already looking at the range. Yeah, it's a great setup here. Cold Zera, yes, he's got the advantage with that scope, but it's still such a difficult shot here. Luckily, he has got enough time to work with. Brings out that scope. First kill's going to be his. Oh, he doesn't actually connect. This could be a problem now. Ducking and weaving, trying to avoid the headshot here. Zipex still in the open, has got the rifle at this point, but Cold Zera needs to be precise. He can't find it, and that's a big round for Astral to pick up. And Zipix actually switched over to get a Krieg of his own. That makes that shot more achievable. One of the spots we talked about was having a scoped rifle looking into the pit. That headshot, he still couldn't find it. So, huge win. Credit to Zipix inside of the pit for holding his nerves. That tenacity he showed there. And it's all down to the utility, the technicality from that round of Astralis. They knew they didn't have the firepower there. They had to segregate the T's. You can see the smokes, the Molotovs landing in those long doors. It's making it so difficult to back things up. The flashbang comes in from Dupree. It gives them a bit of a window to find those kills. And then at this point, the two versus one lands in their favor. That's technically a bonus round that Astralis pick up there. They find themselves a 3-0 device looking sharp with the AWP. Takes down Rain. This is an eco round from FaZe here. So you can see Deagles, no armor, one smoke, once again trying to get that bomb planted, but FaZe can normally do a lot more with just pistols. Here we go. Down quickly. Oh, good find. Wow. Actually, Device that got that on the AWP. That was not from the M4 that we were watching. Either way, it was still certainly through the door. That was through the open door. Olaf, great shots on a deagle. Four on two still. And no guns retrieved yet for the FaZe Clan side. I say yet, there is only the one, obviously, from that shot, and it's inside of mid. Zipix from range, watching that at CT spawn. On way back towards long A, and probably not going anywhere this round. Now, this is where the game will get interesting. We know when FaZe find himself with a bit of rut dust too, what's the go-to plan? Nico just runs through the mid doors. He would go and find kills by himself. That's when they feel like they start dropping off a little bit. I don't think we're at that point just yet. We've only had one single gun round. There'll be another one here the first time for the AWP to come out. Normally in the hands of Olaf Meister, he purchases into that weapon straight away. Up against Device, though, who doesn't look like he's missing many shots. And a, a team that's not known for double AWP setup really starting to bring it into the game. I think you have to on Dust too. It'll be Dupree. He's got a fantastic sniper under his belt. Watch out for that as we get into round number number five here. Proper gun rounds here. Long spawn for Nico this time. They will take those every single opportunity they get. The spam from the Kriegs is just ruthless. Made just takes a brunt of the damage down to 61. The incendiary's decent though. Nico, he'll have the full back. He looking, see him looking at his teammate's screen there to see if he got the frag, but nothing connects whatsoever. Dupree. Great position. Run boost across mid. This will be spot. Okay, well, fair enough. Not if he's not standing there. I was going to say, he's still spotable from where he was standing on that angle, but would have been hard to imagine him hitting the shot. I say that, but these guys are so damn good and so yeah. fast that people do things like that all the time. Oh. And yet I'm still amazed at how fast they are. Rain gets taken down. Headshot through the edge of the door. And again, Astralis have the opening pick. Yeah. And they'll fall right back at this point. Take the advantages where you can find them. FaZe, they were the ones struggling with that yesterday, being a little bit too aggressive. That's one hell of a nade. That's going to do a boatload of damage towards Nico. Down to 32. An incendiary to follow it up for good measure as well. They've got themselves one massive advantage here on the Astralis side. They are not slowing down at all. It's an interesting Molotov to be thrown after that nade because with the amount of damage done, you'd expect someone in middle waiting for the player who's already weakened by the nade to be yeah. backing out, but no one was. It would be a great setup if they had someone just holding that angle. Either way, they're set for a 3-2 defensive split and two inside of B. Hence why no one was at the doors as Magist fires back inside of the smoke. No one directly in front of him. There is now. Brokey gets hit, so does Cold. In fact, Cold goes down, and Magisk isn't done there. Steps out for more, Olaf. Finally silences him, and fair play, he finds Dupree as well. But still a one on three, 15 seconds. Bomb down inside of the site, and an op that I don't imagine is going to be easy to save. He could go back out toward T-Spawn. Yeah, he looks like he's safe to do that. Five seconds, has to give in. A couple of nice shots there from Olaf Meister, but the only kills found, Magus completely destroys them. Once again, Matt, it's the utility. They're not trying to take one-on-one -on -one duels here. They're trying to slow them 
down. Whistler with a clock made things uncomfortable. And as soon as Majis gets that kill with the smoke, he can confirm that's where we're going to finish up. It's a very common strategy on Dust2 right now, just to go to those contact plays, off a flashbang, through the smoke, and as soon as you get that kill, especially with 30 seconds remaining, you're going to call everyone over, drop your incendiaries, drop your HEs, and start spamming away. They couldn't even get close to the bomb side there. Olaf Meister gets two consolation frags with the maximum loss bonus. They'll be able to buy once again. Olaf Meister, of course, gets no extra money. So he'll be there, <coughs> AWP in hand. A couple of Kriegs brought out in the hands of Cold Zera and Brokey, and we've got a UMP for Nico. I do hope that Muki is actually working. Uh, yeah, I can All hear right. you coughing, but I think oh, it's fine. Dear. All right. Try well. again. Try it now. <coughs> okay. Well, if you've heard that <laughs> at all, right. That's I don't know if I works. trust this board. It seems a little, <laughs> little finicky this time. Little... Yeah, yours is fully. Mine okay. doesn't mute. I just don't mute. Okay. All right. No coughing for you, I'm afraid. All right. Well, I'm sorry, everyone. Tweet me if you can hear me coughing, and uh, I will try not to slowly die all cast. <laughs> It'll be fine. What a great job from Dupree. I love the discipline as well. He doesn't go for a second kill there. Magis, a master of the B-bomb site, and it's so deadly. If you get that Krieg on the CT side, it's even stronger. Holding angles, having the scope, and speaking of headshots, there we go. It's all of my stuff, and Dupree answers straight back. They can't hold on to these advances at all. Locked out by the utility once again. Brokey has to fit the brakes on towards short. Four and four, they're heading towards long, but it's only that UMP in the hands of Nico yet to score a frag. Yeah, surprising. Yeah, yesterday, oh, he this. certainly looked great. Glaive, you're right, is looking for information. Astralis always seem to know. They have an intuition about them on when to do this. And it, I say intuition because it's not like they've got a lot of information on the map. Look how passive they are, and yet he's able to push without contact all the way to T-spawn. Yeah, that's actually pretty massive. Well, now they can really focus towards the A side of the map. He's confirmed that B's clear. It's taking a bit of a risk. Of course, they could rotate towards lower, but they need to try and find advantages here. Be a little bit... A little bit surprising for them. He's going to find, oh, maybe two players here. Nico just rotates out of long. Picks up the AK-47 here. If they fall back to that position, Glaive's going to absolutely destroy them. This could be happening right now. They're not going to be checking this at all. First one comes in for Glaive. Look at the double kill. Takes down the bomb. Can't find the third, but that should be the round. 45 seconds remaining now. They have to pretty much commit towards A. Both players towards those long doors. Great stuff from Glaive. That was fantastic, and that's demoralizing if you're phase sure. They responded fast, but they never expected his presence. It does somehow sit in my mind that this is still possible with the AWP. Cold's gonna jump across. He's got a oh! Krieg, but device, my god! I say they surprise me with their speed. He hits a run boost and closes the round. Oh my! They just wanted to bait the off and he absolutely destroys them. Now that's demoralizing. If the flank from T-Spawn wasn't, the fact that he plucks them out of the air like that, that's astonishing, Matt. Oh, this is looking very, very good for Astralis and scary if you're a phase band. They're not getting anything done here at all. They're barely getting close to a bomb site at this stage. Not a single C4 has been planted. As we go into round number seven, they're going to call a tactical timeout on the phase plan. Their second one already. And we're not even at the halfway point of the first half. This is actually kind of insane. They're going to have to start picking the pace here. They can't just rely on those long pushes. They're going to have to start maybe the mid split. Nico just pushing through the mid door. Something has to happen here because they're losing every advantage they find. And at that point, Glaive pushes pushing towards C-spawn. What a masterclass of counter that is. We always talk about Dust2 being a reactive map. It was a four and four. He didn't necessarily have to push, but he felt like it was a safe bet. No one there, all the way around. And he tucks himself in as well. He doesn't push towards top of middle. He's just ready and waiting. They have no idea. All they can do is with their knives out is jump and hope he misses a shot, but he is absolutely spot on there. Device, even better. Four players this time for FaZe over toward B. Just the only one inside of the site, but with pistols, they don't elect to actually push all the way in. Glaive, though, look at this again. He's just everywhere. Ooh, a bit awkward. As soon as he starts to miss the spray on the M4, that gives Baroki a chance to come back out and capitalize. Could have been cleaner. Might have found all three if it were. I suppose that's a John Maddenism. If it were better, yeah. <laughs> he would have gotten all three. Yeah, okay, fair enough, dude. Well, they pick up an M4, A4, but Brokey, he swallowed a grenade in the process. He's down to 56 points of health. Nico has got armor as well, but he's very well versed. The Deagle might as well keep him on that weapon. And for now, four versus three. Waiting for any sort of CT aggression or mistakes, but Astralis, they're not making any of those today. This is looking so good for them. They're not going to feed Faze and start getting them back into the game here. Bit of mistiming there from Device, but he's still got plenty of backup from Zipex towards CT scores, so and they're fine just to fire off some shots towards his middle doors. Device, good position, not... Quite as accurate this time on the flick. Nor that. But he has the information that they're working up toward Catwalk, and as such, they get ready inside of A. They'll play passive. Use that range to their advantage. Oh, bomb. Dupree on an op. And yet we saw this yesterday. It seems that bomb is falling down towards CT spawn so many times. 
I mean, look, it's a fact of the math. You get hit with the right momentum moving forward, it's going to happen. But usually, I would say, if you're coming in with the bomb on this angle, try and hold the back wall. Situational, sure. Olaf does still have a one on three to work with. Has an M4, no armor, however. Great stuff from Zipex. He knows the bomb down towards CD spawn. With 14 seconds, he's got no time to go towards B. He has to collect the bomb, then make his way up the A ramp. And at this stage, he's going to go down. Zipex ready and waiting. And that, yeah, that bait from Majisk was strictly so that Zipex knew he could peek. Yeah. Really great stuff here. Astralis are not missing a beat. Sure, a couple of shots go against them there, but still, three players survive. Their money is swelling at this point. FaZe have another full buy here. We'll look at the scores as we get into round number eight. Nico, zero and seven. Cold Zero, one. Rain, one. Brokey, two. The only players performing right now is Olaf Meister. He's got seven kills, and most of those mean exit frags. We just saw him get a couple there. He got two of the all before when the round was over. He got an opening pick before. This time, not as successful. Looking for the cross towards short is Duke Reaper. Flashbangs were coming through. I did say, Matt, as soon as things go wrong, they'll start pushing through the mid doors. It's trying to cause chaos here. Rain gets close, but hasn't committed just yet. Ooh, oh, dear. Not good enough. Not at all. Nico is just having an absolute mare. Yeah, he's zero, two, and eight. He's rattled. I, mean, I, I think they all are, to be fair. Cold zero, we talked about them being the duo, playing off of each other potentially. One and seven. Rain, one and seven. Brocky, two and seven. Poor Olaf's going to be wondering where the rest of his team is. Yeah, this is just looking quite woeful from FaZe. Uh, that's a pretty common angle for an orb to look for the crack in the mid doors there. The fact he's even in that position where he's vulnerable to that against a double orb setup, it just won't do. I, I, I'd have to, and this is where you, Chad, some of the more analytical minds could probably nail it down faster. I have to look at why, but it seems like when Dust 2, when things start going wrong, you tend to get caught on angles frequently. It's one of those maps that you, there's a false sense of security maybe, where there's a very clear divide it's, between CT territory and T. Sure. But when they peak, they just get, you just get wrecked. It, it's certainly a confident-based map. If you're feeling like you're not finding your picks, you're getting completely destroyed all over the place. You're just trying to go around as a pack. You're trying to run these defaults, but it's just not working out at all. This is barely a strategy coming in from FaZe Clan, as Dupree helps himself to his fourth kill, looking for the ace, but the double orb set up. It will find all five there. Device to get the final kill. This looks way too easy for Australia. It's not even being tested right now. Holding an, an an initial line, get one kill, fall back, fall back, fall back, nail all your shots, and phases have no response for it. They need to just go the default up towards shore, Xbox smoke down. Let's just get an A execution in. Let's take away some of the vision from the Orpers. Let's drop some players down towards CT spawn. These mid splits aren't working, the long takes are doing nothing. Astralis are just way too ready for them. So is Nico, he brings out a scout. Shot to tag up Dupree. Gives them some damage early. Unfortunately, Olaf himself is bound down to a similar level of health remaining. Okay, at least get through the mid doors. But we've seen Astralis play very passive when they know they're up against an eco. In a few rounds so far, and play will take Olaf the rest of the way down. So what's the play here? They have a couple of smokes. You're going to see those two towards CD spawn. One on top of the box, one towards the CD spawn area itself. Try and flash over towards B. That's about as excited as it gets. They're hoping for a CT be inquisitive towards middle here. But once again, find the advantage and just bury yourself towards a bomb site here. Those are the two smokes we talked about, but still CT's firing off shots there. The bomb goes down. It's the org and that B bomb site. We talked about how potent that can be. And once again, it's looking way too easy for Astralis here. One kill. That's the first in the game for Nico as it goes one and nine. They really need to pull their socks up here. This is their pick, and they're getting absolutely wrecked right now. Timeout time, maybe? You're going to get back into money. They've already, They've already used bought. two, right? Yeah, I suppose that's true. I mean, you've only got so many. Well, you have four. Yeah. You've only got so many in the game. And you want to have a few left over for the second half. If there's a possibility for a comeback, you want to keep the momentum going. Long spawn again. I, I think that is going to take it. Hope for the best. All of my stay down towards the drop down. He hits the shot. It's so that's, unfortunate it doesn't connect. Yeah, that's frustrating. He, he did the right thing. And you can see they're still having con they have the confidence to take those picks. I credit them for that because, as you say, it's very possible to just fall off completely. At least they have some initiative. What is that from This is ridiculous that he's that far forward. The amount of damage dealt already. But it is back to a 4 and 4. It's a bit of an overextension given that it was a man advantage. And Device has to be extreme. Oh, no, he's going to go. Oh, he has to be so careful. In this situation, Cold will be gifted another on a platter. Yeah, a little bit overzealous there. The push of Magus was good, but now we've got Glade ready and waiting. 
Olaf wants to buy himself, that, 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 That's equally as optimistic. I don't know what you hope for in that situation, it's just, especially pre-scoped. Doesn't even give himself a chance to flick. Is he just expecting that because someone pushed long, there's no one on the platform? Yeah, this is a strange round from both sides here, but Nico, he's in a lot of trouble. He just walks in towards the tunnels. Dupree out positions him once again under their skin at this point. This is, I'm gonna call this the Vegas round. No one's playing with any information. No one knows what the dealer's hand is and they're just gambling on every position they try and take. I guess if you're phased, nothing else is working. Trying to surprise them, present the unexpected. Rain, one and nine as well. One of the star players usually on Dust2. Can't find anything here at all. He'll just creep up alone towards the A side. He's punished for it. Cold Zero bring one back, 30 seconds at 11 HP. The bomb is on his back here, but how does he even get close towards the bomb site? He's got one smoke and that's not really enough. They know exactly where he is. He hasn't got time to go back towards B. He has to commit off this one. He knows it. The HE will come through. That gives up his position now. Now they can both watch this like a hawk. One bullet from either weapon will do it. He'll flash over, jump across. There's a leap of faith in more ways than one. And oh, no. is he still gonna get away with this? How is he still alive? The flash, the flash is the only thing that saves him. The fact that the smoke's there allows him to get away, but if not for the blindness, he was going down. 11 HP, oh. jump shot, that'll do it. They knew he was low, Glaive finds a hat trick. Astralis finds their 10th, and FaZe are held scoreless. Oh, it's something, I suppose. The bomb goes down, but it's still gonna be 10 and zero. The first plant, I believe, indeed. And it's a scrappy one. It's hardly like it was a great execution, led to a post-plant situation. They were lucky to even get that C4 planted. The jumping shot was always gonna work out. It's one bullet, get a couple of chances of it, and he's got the four second plant coming in. Nico not found, yes, indeed. Normally one of his absolute staples in terms of map pool. And uh, right now, no confidence at all, getting picked off in positions he shouldn't be in. And they're gonna take another tactical timeout here. This might be called by Astralis. No, it is. It's going to be a first half round 11. Three timeouts used. I guess they have to at this point. Yeah. Again, you want to save a few for a momentum in the second half. Yeah. Chance of a comeback, but at first you've got to get yourselves there. I guess with the bomb being planted as well, Yanko says, right, we actually have some money now. We actually have something in the bank. We need to bring a little bit of intuition to the table. What's going to be the next call? That's the first bomb yeah. plant of the game. The entire um, game. And it wasn't even a promising one. Neat. So this is a pretty... Has there ever been... I mean, obviously, there's been 16 O's. Has there ever been a 16 O without a single bomb plant? At a pro level, I'm sure in some matchmaking games, yeah, you just run over. Yeah, them, I'm not sure about the bomb plant, but uh, maybe not at this sort of caliber when you've got, like, two teams you've considered to be in the top five right now, considering recent four, maybe not officially. Um, but this is this is very underwhelming from FaZe. and not the team you would expect to be pulling like this. But I like this, though. Like we said, Xbox smoke down. Let's get up towards short. Let's start working together and start using that brutal aim we know they have. They get a bit of control here. They haven't lost an initial player. I say it too soon. It's all off my stay again. No trade potential. Tries to battle towards middle, and he'll be the one that's dropped without really doing any damage whatsoever. It's going to be Dupree down to 81, but they'll fall back once again and wait for FaZe to make their next move. Shot out, Dupree, tag down to 15. Nico hit to 31, so they exchange damage both directions. Maybe they can give each other a call with the numbers later. Rain, I think goes a little deep, goes past him, we'll sit on catwalk. With 76 HP, Nico's gonna work that direction. Cold as well, Rocky looks like he's gonna head there. The rest of his team doesn't wanna be left out. So Glaive and Device, the two directly in A. That one sm the swing, Sorry. by the way, that's his, his staple on this map is swinging from CT. That one smoke, they know it's a fake. Every time FaZe can commit towards middle B, they actually do the two smokes, right? One on top of the box, one towards CD spawn. That just tells me it's a fake straight away. Just that one smoke, they're ready and waiting. Look at Glaive, he knows this is coming. It's too obvious, it's telegraphed. And, and Dipix is ready for a drop down as well. He, he's more than aware of that situation. You can see Glaive even peeks CT and goes, they're not even there. They have to be going toward Gandalf. They have to be working toward devices. AWP, he finds the first. Glaive knows he can walk out. You're right. They've read this lineup. Oh, look at the damage. It's symmetrical. He takes them both down to 13, but both are alive. And oh. alive for only seconds longer. Another bomb plant, but another round for Astralis. A desperate fake there from FaZe. As I mentioned, when they do their mid to B splits, they use two smokes. Everyone's watched their games now. We've seen a lot of them on Dust2 in this tournament alone. If they're committing, there's always two. Just that one. I'm actually using that as information to pull back and just boost the A defense there. Ready and waiting. Once again, too easy for Astralis there. Device with some fantastic shots for sure. But still, FaZe yet to really make any sort of a dent here as we go into round number 12. FaZe with the plan will at least be able to bring out another buy here, but it's compromised. There's gonna be a UMP for Nico, four Kriegs, maybe just a straight up B rush here, Matt. That is desperate, sending four towards B. Hope for the best here. Didn't work out for them yesterday, but maybe this is the round they need. Yeah, they're just, they're just committing to it. And all else fails. 
Except Dupree's already back in the door. Oh, everyone's blind, though. They didn't look at it. They didn't catch him. They, they looked at it, but they were blind and didn't see him. And that means the disc is going to be overlooked entirely. Oh, Had God. they have spotted him, oh, very different no. situation. But uh, timings, every, I, I, don't, I, I don't know what you do at this point. What do you do? <laughs> when the B-Rush doesn't work, I don't know what to suggest. That's, a, that's I mean, normally that's a foul safe. suggest, to, fair, to be fair. <laughs> that normally works all the time. Um, no bomb plan this time, and they're going to have to take a partial by, unfortunately, but they can't really afford to. They're 12-0 down on Dust2. You can see them kind of smiling as well. I suppose you're going to laugh, you'll cry at this point. This is just a non-starter for FaZe. They're, they are buying up in the next round, as you can see, a scout coming out, a Krieg. I'm not sure why Yanka could even save them at this point. It feels like the game's already done. Have they even broken five frags yet? Still all of Meister. He's had seven since what round five or something. He's currently 7-11. Next place is Coldzera three. Brokey three. That's, Nico two. Rain two. That not is, killing anyone. Yeah, no, that is a good point. Olaf's gone quiet as well. And the rest haven't really gotten any louder. So it's not like there's less space for him. He's just not getting anything done. Phase equally so. Astralis have Look more rounds uh, than anyone they, on phase has kills. Yeah, it's a staggering image. Just, if you get a rush B, at least commit to it. Your spacing's everything there. 19 and three, by the way, for Dupree. Uh, that's almost catching up to JKS last game. Yeah, he was 28 and four in, a, in an 18 round game. Uh, that was remarkable, but yeah, he's on the same pace. Well back. This is where Astralis can start to present weaknesses though. They could get overzealous themselves. Sort a couple of rounds pushing B and maybe giving a couple of kills away for free, especially towards Long, that was a device, and he'll be taken down here. Finally, an opening pick for FaZe. They normally convert these five versus four, but they just don't have the firepower right now. Zipex suddenly does, there's no spacing again, man. Why is one player committing to the corner and no one's there with him? Yeah, and they had a good opening. I think Device gave them an opportunity. He was blinded, and yeah. instead of getting off the angle, he just thought, nah, I'll hold Why it. Why not hold on to it, though? Slow it down, let's go for an eight pin at this point. Use the five on four, they just flash over once, and instead of, sure, rain could go down, but you gotta trade off it. No one's there with him. To be fair, that's the first time, just to go back to the device thing, that's the first time I've seen Astralis do something that seems overconfident. Yes. They've been playing very fundamental even with that, and they recovered from it. You're right, FaZe gave it away, and now they'll have to slow the pace considerably. Zipix, meanwhile, is looking for information. Rock, he's going to have to be so careful. Smoke, flash. That's it. If he goes down, they have no utility to attack onto A. Zipix isn't going to push the whole way around because he doesn't want to be spotted by anyone potentially at the top of mid, which they now are. They weren't then, but they now are. Well, that's all the utility gone. The smoke and the flash used towards middle. And that incendiaries everything. Brokey can't even access to what the short position is. It happens to wait. Second time they've used that. That's the same one they used on Nico. It covers both short and mid. And it lets them do this. Oh! Get position, set them up, and knock them down. You can't forget. If you've been around as a CS fan for as long as we have, or even, you know, the last four years, that TSM set the meta on this yes. map. The core of that team is Astralis, and we're seeing why. And they're being even more dynamic now than they used to be then. That was all around the A site and rotation. This is being aggressive and assertive. That's unreal. Just punishing the fact they have no utility. Look at the incendiary. He knows if they have to commit off this. There's 15 seconds remaining. Once they throw this incendiary, they have to run around the corner and they can't stop because they'll just burn to a crisp. They have to run and gun at that point. Having the force by every single round now, they just need one, at least one round. They can't be 15 0 Scouts, Mac 10s, Galils, one Krieg here, and Dupree hasn't missed many shots so far. And he hits that one as well. Rain down to 25 points of health. Do they just commit through the mid doors here? Clave, he'll find him. It's the follow up AG. Another tag comes in as Nico goes down to 15. This is just unrelenting from Astralis. Fade can't find a single point of access on any facet of the map. Henry, what are you doing tonight? Yeah, casting an absolute mauling of phaser baron. No, but, but you know, after, normally I wouldn't ask you that, but I think we're gonna have some time tonight. We might do. <laughs> I, you know, we might have to get some dinner plans booked or something, because it's gonna be early back to the hotel at oh, this device. rate. They're already dead. Let them have this round. <laughs> I don't think that's on the cards. Three Kriegs, two ops. That's about as strong as it gets right now on a CT side. Cold Zira. He'll at least win one back by getting device. So a single op remains. Dupree, by the way, second op. Not something we saw from the history of him, but he looks good on it so far this map. We did not see this Astralis in Copenhagen. I'll say that much. On home soil, they looked underwhelming. They were lackluster. A lack of firepower, strategic approach, but this has been a perfect game of CS. They're having some fun out there now. They're just pushing. 
toying with Baze almost at points, and uh, at this point still a four on four, and a distinct lack of utility once again. A couple of smokes, a couple of flashes, just waiting for more pushes to come in. You've got 30 seconds, Matt, with zero map control. You're just going to walk out long at this point with a scout? It's going to be a 2-2 split. At least they'll have numbers on Off their side, as well, but you're Glaive. right. Glaive, easy, easy with a Krieg. I don't understand why Olaf jumps on that. Didn't even give him time to reset for the aim, and Cold at least pulls one back, knows the others toward long, gets the angle, Krieg scoped in. Glaive doesn't have time to run all the way down long and avoid being being peaked, but Cold just wants to stick the plant knowing that he's going to be hiding against the wall. That gives him time. Smart read. He's given himself a chance. Did the flash come in before he spotted the player at CT or not? Yes, it did. Because now he's able to know that Dupree is working in behind. He's trying to isolate this down to a one-on-one -on -one and two one-on-ones, as it would be. But Dupree is it brilliant. He so makes good. sure he doesn't overcommit to the peak. He knows that Zipnix has to come into Cold's mind, and he goes over the box instead. He's just taking all the aggro away from that short position. All that time, just ducking and weaving, allowing Zipnix to get closer and closer. Even if Cold hits that ridiculous shot there, he's going to get traded out. Astralis with the perfect game so far. They need one more round to complete the streak. 14 and 0. There is money for FaZe Clan here with another plan coming in from Cold, but that's about as interesting as it gets. Brokey 3, Rain 3, Nico 2. Seven fragsmen there, three star players there. This is just not good enough. We're going to see now. We're getting to the next round and we'll see whether they can do anything with it. Kriegs are out once again. The long spawn hasn't worked for them at all so far. Incendiary thrown and a completely blind all off my so Just going to have to peek again. Nades being exchanged here. Desperate to find the opening kill. Smoke down in the doors. All our fires through it. Makes a grazing blow just as he drops back, but he'll live to fight on with the Krieg in hand. Dupree, meanwhile, back in mid. Now sitting with 20 kills. He's gonna look for more. Oh, we go ahead. Run for rain. So peek on Cat, given that the smoke's still down. I'd be curious if you were back by the tank. Oh, Dupree finds cold suicide. Watch out because there's still a gap. Nico, don't walk into that blindly. I'd be curious if you were back by the tank with that run boost. If you go over the top of the smoke, hang on. Dupree hits 22 and 4 at the end of the first half. Whether it'll be 15 0 or 14 1, still up for debate. Skipping that phase is down a man. There we go. You might lean towards the former, but they've changed it because Rain gets device. That opens up catwalk for them. Only one player left over on the A site that can actually slow them down. But Zipix through a smoke is going to creep back up onto the ramp, and Glaive is doing exactly what he needs to. Rain pulls one back. Bomb waits at long. 29 seconds. And Glaive knows there's a chance they can still get to long. So he'll play the box instead, but he has to cover both angles. No. Because they just can't see it. Olaf's missed. Got to Glaive's hit this. On, the, on the ramp, though. He knows he's there. And the problem is that Glaive has no support. So Majisk is locked in. This is their best chance yet. Yes, he... Oh, dropped the ball. No! He dropped the ball, Majisk. He turns and catches him. He knew exactly where they were. Get him out of here to 15-0. Astralis complete the perfect run on Dust2. Remarkable scenes here. Face, indeed, if you don't laugh, you'll cry. We'll take a break and see if they can do anything with the second half.
I would try and think of something witty and clever and tell you about some sort of historic moment in sports when a team didn't show up for a game. But I can't think of any. I, I don't know what to say. FaZe has yeah. looked so good in recent weeks, and Astralis looked perfect in that first half. Yeah, and this is the pick of FaZe Clan. Bear that in mind. We move over to the pick of Astralis next, which is going to be uh, Nuke, of course. So this is going to be a difficult one to recover. I guess it's so bad at this point that you just got to let it go. It doesn't matter what the scoreline is. If you lose the map 16-14 or 16-0, the, the result remains the same. Either way, we're getting to this pistol. I think we all know at this point, uh, if you don't win this in the FaZe side, you are out of this map and it's just a matter of time I would say before Astralis closes one out as device waits for the aggression here will he get the opening pick he'll get a little bit of damage in but not quite take down Olaf Meister who still battles towards those long doors Olaf good shot starts it off with Zipix going down they got the first kill in the first pistol well device will get it back immediately I guess at this point trying to avoid a 16-0 that, that's something like that would be pretty historic. We don't see many of those these days, especially at this level. You, you mentioned if you don't laugh, you'll cry. I'll go back to cold laughing. It's actually a bit of relief for me to see that because yes, I know that stressed? there's some tilting, you know, mentality sometimes within phase. Certainly, I've you know, Yanko is a pretty strong personality. Cold, the same thing. Nico, they're all. They've been around enough to know that they can brush this off. But if you don't, you're gonna have a bigger problem in the next map. So at least laughing it off does mean that they can reset potentially for map number two, which we might have very soon. Not if Rain has anything to say about it. Covering off door cross. Glaive's gonna go one-on-one -on -one with him. Device is the one that has the bomb. He's already gotten by, so he can go for the plant. Rain identifies that, but they don't need to peek him anymore. They need to let the bomb do the talking and pull the CTs toward them in doing so. Nico's gonna head in on the flank, which Glaive is watching. Rain will get to free. Nico will get Glaive. Now they've got a chance. Device on 28. The shutout on his shoulders, and he knows that they're coming in. They know both directions, tries to find the headshot, finds one. Now we can just play the time. Not the HP advantage. Two boxes to get by Nico. Oh! And Device oh! does it in a clutch <laughs> in style. And 16-0 on a stage at an IEM event. Part of a Grand Slam. That's a statement. How has he pulled off that last round? Sure, not the most exciting scoreline, but you've got to respect that. Astralis look like world beaters right now. Smiles on the faces of FaZe. It's good to see they're not tilted.